Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Microsoft Office for free. I'm also going to show you how to get Google Docs for free and I'm going to show you another product called LibreOffice that you can get for free. Now, you might wonder, why am I showing you three different productivity suites, all of which are free? And why are these companies giving them away for free? Well, I'll explain that in the video. They're all a little bit different. They have different pluses and minuses to them, and they work a little bit differently. So by watching this video, you'll be able to select the one that's right for you. I'll also show you how they can collaborate with each other, how I can create a document in one and open it with another. So I hope this video is useful. If you like learning and technology and learning how we can teach and learn more effectively by using technology, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you like this video. Comment down below if there's anything else you'd like to learn about how we can use these free products on our systems. In this video, I'm going to speak to and demonstrate three different productivity suites that are free that you can use in order to create documents, work with financial or sp spreadsheet information, create presentations, plus more. So those three products, let me just grab them here so I can show you them. Uh, it's important and it's some, sometimes a little confusing. What is free? What isn't free? What are the advantages of each product? Which products uh, allow me to do what? Separate those guys there. They want to still want to play together I guess so the first thing that we need to understand when I'm talking about these these uh, products is I need to understand that in today's world there are sort of two places that I can exist when it comes to computers well there's more than that but um, this isn't going to be that detailed of a explanation well that didn't work so well that was supposed to be a nice cloud but we have the online world and then we have the local world where I have an application installed on my computer. So a local computer installation means that I can run the application from my computer using the resources of my computer and I do not need to be connected to the internet. Online, by its very definition, and now I've got to make this into more of a cloud, um, by definition means that I'm connected to the internet. So when it comes to the free versions of Office, Google, and LibreOffice, it's important to understand what is and isn't free. In the world of Microsoft, the Office.com or the online version is free. And the local version or the one that you would install directly on your computer, you would need to pay for. That's considered premium. And when it comes to Google, well, Google lives entirely in the cloud, and in the Google version, there is the free version, which is for personal use, and then there is a paid version, which is for business use. And in the world of LibreOffice, what we have is they don't have a cloud service. You would download and install that onto your local computer. And when it comes to installing on your local computer, Microsoft has a version of Office that will install on a Windows computer or your Mac computer. Google does not have a downloadable Office. And LibreOffice has a downloadable version that works on your computer. And it works on Linux, Mac, and iOS and, and, and mobile devices. I should also say that the Office version uh, that Microsoft has, there is also a mobile version. And when it comes to Google, it's cloud-based, so there is also a mobile version. So I guess there's a, a third one that I could put in here, which is mobile, but I'm not going to uh, discuss or demonstrate the mobile ones in this particular video. But all of these have versions that work in mobile environments. Okay. So let's have a look at each of these in turn. Let's have a look first at Office, what I can get for free, what I have to pay for. So when I go into, this is an Edge browser, I gave each of them their own browser. So in my Edge browser, I've gone in and I created an account called learning and technology at outlook.com. When I sign in with that free account, you'll notice that I have the option to install Office or buy Office. This is to create a local installation where I can install it on my computer. This will not work until I buy 
a copy of Microsoft Office. However, you'll notice that down the side here, I have an application bar and I can hit my little app launcher here and see all the different apps that are available. So I can easily go in and create a Word document. I can create a blank document or use some of the templates that are there. And this will create a Word document and I'm working right now in the cloud. So this is an online version of Word and I can say, hello, world because whenever you do demos you use hello world i get a lot of features i can do you know i can you know do bolding i have tons of different editing features i, I was once described it was once described to me that the office productivity applications have become so complex these days that they're no longer productivity at suites they've now become development environments that's a bit of a computer science joke but the idea is that there are so many features to all of the productivity tools out there now that even if you're an advanced user you're probably not using 100 percent of the capacity or capability of those office products chances are you're only using a subset but in some cases, for example, let's say I want to use the editor to check the quality of my writing. When I hit the editor, it will tell me, you know, what's happening here. It'll do things like it calculates, you know, an editor score once I do 100 words. And it gives me some information, but you'll notice these little diamonds. In order to get access to the suggestions for writing and refinements, I'm going to have to purchase the paid for version of Office. If I don't care about that editor, then that's not going to be meaningful to me. I can still create very nice documents. I can still work with styles in my document. I can do all sorts of things in order to uh, create documents online. If I use dictate and go in here, hello there, this is me dictating to Microsoft. Oh, I have to allow it, sorry. Hello there, comma. I'm creating a document just by talking to the internet, period. New line. I'm just gonna turn that off. So there you can see, I can, I can use some of the really cool features that we have in here. And you'll notice underneath here, there's uh, all of the, the information. Now, I did a whole other video on dictating. And if we go in here, I can go in and do the same thing uh, with an Excel. I get some cloud storage here. I can work with some OneNote. All of these are free and give me pretty advanced capabilities, but not all of the features. Some features will require me to pay for a premium edition of Microsoft Office. And you can go in and these different apps are in here. If I go to my Google documents, again, I can sign in with my Google account and I can do things like create documents, create sheets, slides, forms. And if you go here, you can see these are the applications that Microsoft will give you for free in the cloud. These are the applications that Google will give you for free in the cloud. And if I go into Word, I can collaborate. If I go into Docs, I can collaborate. So I can have more than one person working on the same document at the same time. Another cool feature is what if I have a friend who's working in Google Docs and I'm working in the free version of Microsoft Office? Well, if I go into this document and I'm just using a, a document to demonstrate this, this could be an, a spreadsheet. This could be a presentation as well. They have the ability to go in and save as. And notice I could save it to my OneDrive to keep it in the cloud. I can rename it. I can download a copy to my local computer. Now, I won't be able to work with it on my local computer, but I can keep a copy on my local computer. Maybe if I want to transfer it to someone else that does have a version of Word. Um, I can download it as a portable document format or a PDF document, or I can download it as an ODT format, which is exchangeable between the different uh, uh, different systems. So here I'm just going to download it. It's going to ask me where I want to download. So it's downloaded into my downloads folder. I could choose a location for that. And then if I go into my Google, if I go into docs here, you'll notice I can go in and do the same thing. So I like to share my ideas. So if you want to share your ideas, you can go into file and I can download it. Notice I can also download it in the ODT open document format. Notice I can actually even download it as a Word document or, or different formats here. PDF is big, Word document is big. So Google will allow me to both open and save as a Word document, which I could then 
upload into my OneDrive. So they are uh, collaborative, not only in real time, which I could do another video on, but they're also collaborative in terms of I can choose whichever my preferred environment is. And as long as I put it into a format that the other system can read, the most common being either the uh, ODT or the PDF document format, I can share those files. But what about LibreOffice? LibreOffice is a bit different in that their uh, monetization model is through a donate button. So you can donate in order to help support this open source, open community. And you might say, well, I think I'm good. I got, you know, Google, I got Microsoft. Why would I want this? Well, the big thing here, as I pointed out, is that we can download it to a computer. And if you're watching this video, then you obviously have internet access, but sometimes it's hard to forget or hard to remember that there's not everybody in the world has constant, consistent and high quality internet access. So what do those folks do? Well, they have to pay. Well, a lot of times if you don't have good internet access, you know, paying uh, the money for a, a subscription to Microsoft Office is problematic. And if you don't have good internet access, well, you're out of luck with Google. So where are we? we can download this to a very inexpensive computer such as a Raspberry Pi running Linux. Again, if you're interested in a video on that, comment down below. I created a, a computer that was less than, well, it was about $40. Even with the screen and everything, I could bring that computer in at, at $50, $60. Very, very inexpensive running a Raspberry Pi running Linux, running this uh, LibreOffice on there and have a complete um, suite there. There are other open source and open community projects out there as well. LibreOffice is just very well known. So you can see that I can go here in the world of Microsoft, get a bunch of free apps. You can see I can go here with LibreOffice and download the free app to run locally. And you can see with Google, I have a lot of options in terms of working with different applications as well. Just very briefly to get this free account on Microsoft is super easy. All you have to do, and I'm just going to close my browser so that it doesn't remember me. I'm going to open up a, a clean browser and I'm going to go in here and just type in office um, office.com. And when I type in office.com, you'll notice that I can log in with one of my existing accounts, but I can also say I'm going to use another account and here I can go in, no account, create one. And when you create this account, you can either put in like an existing Gmail account. You cannot use a work account because you're all, you, you, your work company would have to do that, but you can get a new email address and they'll give you a free Outlook or Hotmail.com address. So I could type in whatever I wanted in here. Like I typed in learning and technology, but I'll call this, uh, well, I won't put anything in there, but I can easily create an account. And then when I do, I can log in with that account. So I can go to office.com. And when I'm in office.com, notice I can sign in as learning and technology at Outlook, which that is that account I created. And when I go in there, I won't stay signed in because I won't be using this account. I have my documents in here. I have my applications in here. Now, there's yet another thing that I want to talk to you about briefly before I wrap up this incredibly free productivity video here. And that is if you're a student or a faculty member, or if you work for a company, when Microsoft Office, if, if your company purchases a license, for Microsoft Office for you, you are not bound to a single machine. So you can actually take your account, whatever your work account is, and you can install that on multiple computers and multiple mobile devices, which is intended for you to be able to be productive anywhere. I think this is a fantastic feature that Microsoft Office offers. So the idea though, is that if you create a work document, it'll go into the work OneDrive, but, and if you go to another computer, it'll still be there. So you can have a computer at home where you're working and being product productive, and then you can commute to work and work on your computer at work. And you don't have to worry about having to have those applications uh, uh, or have those computers travel with you. The other other thing we can do is if you're running Windows 10 and you type in Office, the Office Store has an app. This really just points up to the cloud. So this is really, if I click New Word Document, it's actually going to go in. Now in my case, I have Windows 10, but what's happened with my Windows 10 is I'm connected to my 
personal account. So I've sort of messed this up a little bit. But when you go in, if you have uh, your account that, that learning and technology at outlook.com is the one I used, when you use that account, that'll connect up to this here website. So there you have it. Three great products, each with their own purpose and each with their own way of helping people be more productive. People like you. If you like the video, hit like. If you want more videos on how we can use technology to learn and teach better, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, and here's some more videos that I created that I hope will be useful for you.